Hi, my name is Jamie and welcome to the Quilting Compound. Uh, this is my first video, but I wanted to show you a little idea I had about using up some of your scraps and their little scrap jars. So I'm gonna give you a little tutorial, a little pattern I came up with to use up your scraps. So here we go. What I did, and here's a bigger version. So what I did is I gathered some of my scraps, not all of them, but, and put them all the same colors. So I've got a pink bunch here and I have numerous other colors over here, but this is where we're gonna start. You can sew your scraps together any way you want because we're gonna trim them down. So one, the, the width will be five inches. So if you wanna go ahead and start at five inches with However you want to sew them together, you can do it like that. I did it all different kind of ways. I would just sew them together in strips, triangles, triangle squares, however, whatever I wanted to do. And so that's the easy way. There's no real formula. Just use your quarter inch. You can press open if you want it and keep them laying more flat. But, and then you'll trim them. So let's cut up a few. I'm just gonna cut this close to five. And then I'll set this aside and, and I'll get something else. And I'm gonna sew this on. Maybe if I can find my foot pedal. press now if you want. You can finger press whatever you want to do. My iron's right here. So I can just reach over and give it a little press. I am kind of, I do like to press as I go. You know, sometimes I think a, it takes up a lot of time if you do that. But so now I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. I did make it wrinkled. And I'll put it over here. So now I've got this, let's see this, let's just sew these two together. Let's see what else we have. Let's sew this long strip together. Clip it apart and see what we've got here. So we've got that. So we know that it needs to be at least five inches long or wide. So we'll measure the five inches. This is exactly, this is almost five exactly. So I can go ahead and sew this on if I want, or I can come up with something else. Maybe I don't want those. Maybe I don't want these two pinks together. Maybe I don't like that. Maybe I want to add some of these red pinks in there. But however you want to do it, whatever colors you like to go together. And pink's my new favorite color. is the Juki Haruka, I think. Actually, when I went, I went to get the Juki 2010 or whatever it is, they were out of stock, but they had these. And she gave me this for the same price as the other. I think it just has a few more feet. Just, yeah, I think it just has more feet which is good because it did come with a quarter inch foot, even though I think it's a little bit wide, a quarter inch. My quarter inch is, to me, seems really generous. Mm. 
let's see. And now we'll sew these together. to your liking. I, if my seams need to meet, I really like to press to the side. Because I do want my points to meet. My chair is terrible. So let's measure this. It needs to be seven long. So where are we? This is real scientific. And we are a little past seven. Let's check the width. It's not quite square. Let's see. There we go. So it's right now, it's measuring what I need. So I'm going to trim. My block. Let me see if I can get this in the camera. Don't run away. I'm going to try my block. I don't know if you can see here. It's got to be five wide. So I'm going to square it up. Trim that little bit off. I'm going to flip it over. I like to line it up with my lines. And I like to line it up with both my ruler and my mat. that. Now I have to decide what part of this do I want to cut off? Which part do I like? Or do I want to keep a little bit of both? Because it needs to be seven long. And I think I'll keep just a little bit of both. Yes, I know I didn't shut my rotary blade. So now it's five by seven. So our next step is we wanna take our corner squares, which would be these. They measure one and a half by one and a half inch square. So these little, these little guys. So what you can do is you can either draw a line corner to corner, which I don't really like to draw the lines. I would rather use this Creative Grids folded corner clipper ruler. I like it better. So you place it on the corner here your ruler with this line and this point to where it's corner to corner. I could turn it over the right way. Make sure everything's lined up. It, it's really a, it's forgiving. And cut those little dudes off. Now you can pin that on here if you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and sew it on and show you. I do have the, uh, the tape, the clip clip sew tape. What is it called? <laughs> that tape. I also like to use my clapper here on these corners because they are small and sometimes they don't want to lay down. So, I'm 
I'm not keeping that scrap. Again, layer square here in the corner. Take your ruler or your however you want to do it. I prefer it this way. You gotta make sure that doesn't move because it doesn't want to move on me sometimes. got either the, the top or the bottom, whichever one we uh, choose. Now to make this over here to do all, I think there's 25 locks here to do all the background of the jars and the lid, which I'm getting ready to show you here, the lid. Um, I use like a um, a quarter yard, or I actually used a fat quarter, because everybody's got a fat quarter, don't they? So one more corner. Which I'm sure you know. Get it on there good. Stand up. I'm going to pick it out, my best friend. Sometimes I think I use the seam ripper more than I use my uh, sewing machine. I know there's all kinds of scrap quilts out there. I'm constantly looking for ideas to use all my scraps because I feel like I need to use all my scraps before I buy anything else. But, you all can't see that <laughs> what I really have. So let's get this on here real good. Sometimes you might need to pin it, but I know there are the anti-pinners out there I pin quite a bit. Better. I'm gonna press this down. I'm gonna press this down. I'm going to stick my uh, clappers on both ends and then I'm going to show you how to make the lid. This is the lid 
It's two and seven eighths inch wide by one and one fourth. One and a quarter. This is a gray um, I don't know. I can't think of the name of it. Yeah. Hopefully I'll think of it in a minute. Grunge. Gray grunge. I thought it they made uh it makes pretty good lids. Okay, I want, you want to press these towards the gray, towards the lid. Okay, now we have to decide what do we want to be the top of our jar. I think we'll do it. I think we'll do the flowers. I don't know. No, I think I'll do that. Okay. So, right sides together. Place your jar and your lid together. You do want a pin. You want a pin because that is going to get your lid to fit on your jar should be perfectly. And sometimes I even pinned in the middle. gonna fit the jar. Yes, it does. And you can press, sometimes you can press up or down or I mean, or open. It may make your, your, your lid fit a little bit better. Depends on which way you press. So let's see. These are about I think I'm going to press towards the jar. Okay, now what we're gonna do, to do this for your lattice work, if you can see. If your lattice work in your cornerstone, I use two inch strips. So, See, see, 
see how well the, the lid fits the jar, but you, you really need to pin. So for your lattice work, this is, this is how I did it. I cut a seven and three fourths inch by two or two by seven and three fourths inch strip here. Sew this on to the right, on the right side of the jar to start. Press, press towards your lattice. Need a better chair. Okay, for your the bottom lattice and your cornerstone, it's a two by two square by a five by two strip. Sew these two together. Press towards your lattice. to the bottom and since you pressed your seam your uh, little cornerstone will just nest right in here I, I will still pin A needle one day hitting a pin. Yeah. And press down. And here's, here's part of your blocks. So I mean, if you want to just go all the way around like this, you can, but this is for these. And this is where you would start over here. And then you would just go on with each block over with the two inch sashings. And then for the border so far, I just have Two, uh, two inch strips all the way around. I couldn't decide whether to put another border or just put a binding. I've made a scrappy binding just for this, which I think I'm just gonna do a scrappy binding and see how it works. I'm gonna, I've got the backing just about pinned on the long arm. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'll go ahead and give you the measurements one more time if you're interested in making it. So the jar lid, it's a two and seven eighths by one and one fourth rectangle. The jar unfinished trimmed up should measure five by seven, just like the picture frame. The background for your lid for your jar which I don't think I told you that earlier, is one and a half inch by one and one fourth. And then all your little corner squares here, they're one and a half by one and a half. All your lattice is two inches and your corner squares are two by two. So 
that's my first video on here. I think I'm going to put it on YouTube. Um, and if it goes well, I think I've got a few like unboxings to do. I do uh, get the uh, Fat Quarter subscription from uh, Fat Quarter Shop. And now I'm going to be getting the So Yeah box because the other night, I guess, some people dropped out. So I'm going to get it. So maybe I'll do some unboxings. I think I, I'm going to work on another pattern, I think. Uh, it's an old pattern, but I think I'm going to try to spice it up some and see how it works. I've got to try it first to see. And then what else am I going to do? But I don't even know if I told you the name of my channel. It's the Quilting Compound. So maybe and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.